to do. Ooh. Uh, I feel like young, young Dawkins, before I even knew what football was, I was just a big kid, like, running around. Nah, like, uh, it's starting to come back. Like, like my conditioning, it took a hit, but that's all a part of it. And, uh, but I'm starting to feel more and more like in myself every day. You know, I'm just hitting the field as hard as I can without over, over stressing it. And I'm just rock, I'm just rocking out. What were those two weeks like? Man. It was honestly, man. It was the, it was the one of the lowest points that I've ever been. Like I never even thought that I can get in that low, cause like I'm so, like uh, I'm so animated. Like I'm so animated, and that that hit hard. Like even like with the mental stuff, like like it hit every part of me, and I was shocked that it can even hit that. And um, but uh, being in the hospital was probably the hardest part, cause I was like, man, like. Like I'm in the hospital, my team is out there working, and I'm here. You know, like I'm not helping if I'm not present. What were you, how long were you in the hospital? When did you go? Um, I think I was in there for like four days. I think it was like like four days. Um, but it was just like they had me up like fluids. Like they were just like like just trying to just get me back. What were some of the physical symptoms that, that you were battling? Yeah. Uh, well, honestly, if there's a checklist for it, it was everything. It was shortness of breath. It was the hot and cold. It was the, it was the cough. It was, it was like everything, like the dehydration, like all of the, the body stuff, like the, like, like the releasing of the body, like everything was just, just at its highest, worse. Do you have a message Yeah, absolutely. Man, uh, like I would say honestly, truly, right, like. Uh, I didn't know what to believe at first because there was a lot of unknown areas about uh, COVID and the vaccine and not the vaccine. But when I took that initiative to get vaccinated, um, I just wanted to do what and was right. But the message that I probably would overall say is uh, do what you're most comfortable with. But I'm glad that I had the vaccine when I had COVID, Um, you know, and I wish that I could have been fully, fully vaccinated. I was right before the fully vaccinated point. But, uh, you know, if I was fully, like, I think that it would have been a little bit easier on, on myself. But, hey, whatever you're, like, comfortable doing, do it. But just do your research and just try to, you know, just think about others because everybody is going to go through it differently. Like, some people, it's it's just a day of hurt. And some people, it's two, it's two weeks. Some people, it's longer. So... Just uh, do your research and, you know, follow what your heart says. Just to clarify, so you had gotten the vaccine, were you in like a two-week window after you got exactly. the shot? Exactly, exactly. Like, the- I, was, I was in a two-week window. I was in a two-week window, almost almost fully done. I was like a, like a day or two short, and, and, and then it hit. But, um, yep. You know, when you got back here and whether you're all right, mm-hmm. Well, uh, overall, the first reaction was, "Dang, Dion, like you skinny," because I lost uh, like uh, some some water weight and uh, weight. But uh, overall, it was just guys just just wanting knowledge of exactly like what was like going on and uh, how it really like made Emmy feel. And um, you know, I just told them the honest truth of what I went through, of like the quarantine period, being away from my family, and uh, just being alone and the whole process of everything and letting them understand that that's a point that you really don't want to like get to especially when ball is going on so you know just i was just overall like honest with them and just was feeding whatever they wanted to hear you know just just the raw honest truth whether it sounded good or it sounded bad i i just shot it straight Um, well, I have a son who, uh, who was a pre immature son and, uh, he had, uh, like, as you know, like when you have a preemie, the last things to grow is, is your lungs. 
And um, I was just thinking about my, my family, that if I got COVID, I can p and potentially harm him because it attacks the, the, uh, the lungs. And um, I just wanted to just make sure that my family was protected and also to, I guess, do what was right for myself and for this team, you know, because uh, the rules of being vaccinated and not, they're all up in the air. And I just wanted to just think about ball. So if getting like vaccinated was the right direction, let's do it. Like, um, you know, I'm here to play ball. I have a family to take care of, and I just want to just do whatever is just going to keep my mind on my routine and the other stuff, just leave to the doctors and the people who study that, just like how we study plays. How, how old is your son now? Uh, shoot, man, my son's getting older every day. He was born in so about six, six months. I think he just hit like six months. He was born in February. So I don't know, February, March, April, May, June, yeah. Yep, so he's on the, the up and up now. Um, he's a big little kid. <laughs> Uh, Dill, his name is Dill. Dill Ray Dawkins. D I L D I L D I L. Dill Ray. And are there still any side effects right now? And how safe do you feel like you are to be in game ready? Yeah. You know, um, McDermott's practices, they are tough. So I think the more of the practices that I go through and push through, I'm going to be perfectly fine. But the symptoms, uh, like, they're not loud, how I would say, with it. Like, I'm still, like, like I'm still, like, tired, like, in practice. Like, I'm like, whew. like, we just, like, went through warm-ups, and I'm kind of, can I get a water? Like, like so, but uh, that's all a part of it. Like, I took a hit, and now it's just time for me to get back, and I'm just glad that I'm back, and I feel like enough time to get myself ready. You know, like, we have a lot of great players, and, uh, we're all pushing. We're, we're all pushing. How much weight did you lose? Man, I, I went from like 333, 334 to like 318. And then, you know, because I wasn't really eating. Like I didn't have, a, have an appetite. And then once I got back and then I started eating three meals a day, then you could put on like three or four pounds easy. So. Do you feel like you have enough time to get to where you need to be for this yeah. team? Yeah, like, like absolutely. Like uh, overall, like I want to give all of the credit to the – to the training staff and the, the doctors and the and the strength staff that has been working with me at, like but like every day because I was completely lost but they gave me the the knowledge and the stuff that I needed to get through it like I'm in here every day I'm I'm, I'm on my vitamins I'm conditioning I'm working out slowly like everything is it's just like their process of what they're doing it just feels right and every day I've been getting better and better in practice like as in pushing and um you know I'm just following what the plan is, you know. Go ahead. Sean was with you lunch on Sunday, and you said that you had a ways to go and that you had a long road back. What have your conversations been like with him or maybe other members of the coaching staff? I mean, look, um, I just got to push. I just got to push. You know, uh, the best way to get in football shape is to play football, and I have not been playing football. This is, uh, like, my second really, like, full, full, full padded practice or third. And, um, you know, like it takes time. So like all of like the small, minute stuff that as you get older, you don't really think of, I got to dial like back in because everything is full speed where everybody has took steps and then hit the ground rolling where I'm just like, all right, right in the fire. But, you know, like that's what happens like when you lose like two weeks, like we're two weeks in and I'm two days in. <laughs> so I just got to just keep pushing myself and just get myself right because playing tackle and getting all of the of the steps and the mindset and all of the new rules and everything, I just got to overly work it and just pr prepare at myself and, and for battle. Yeah, you're one of the 1% of athletes in the world. Yeah. Was there ever a moment when you're in the hospital going, can't believe this is me? A hundred percent. That was the first thing that I thought of. I said, man, how am I a professional athlete? and I'm down bad like this. I said, I can't imagine people who aren't healthy and don't like work out and really like don't do anything. Like I was like, man, like just God bless them. Cause like I just got off of an, an off season where, where I was grinding every day. And then as soon as I come back, I got hit with it. So it was just like, man, like this is crazy, but you know, this is a world fight and I just got hit with a bullet. So it is and what it is.
Yeah. Is there a point in Oslo where you just heard it about yourself? hundred percent. I didn't, uh, like, and like I said, like, I didn't know that my mind could get to the, to the, to the low that it could get to. And I was extremely emotional, man, extremely emotional. Like, I didn't even think that I'm, I was that emotional. And I mean, like, like, I don't want to, want to, like, uh, scare anybody, but like, and like, there was moments that I was like, you know, like, I don't know if I'm gonna make this. Like, like, I was down bad. I was down bad. Where like I could barely move and I was just I was just hurting, but you know you like you keep pushing you know God like has a way of doing stuff and making things happen and like in your life so you can snap back and just like realize that shoot life can be over and before and you know it and regardless of what you made in life and what you did you know you like you just got to just keep stepping and just do and what's right because you know like you never know like what tomorrow brings really. Mm -hmm. It's impacted some of your friends, family, let alone even teammates. Absolutely. You said, man, Dion can be through this. Yeah. Do you think they talk to you about that? Absolutely. So uh, as far as, like, personal family, like, I don't know about, like, the fans and stuff like that. But um, as far as, like, personal, like, family, um, when I got hit with it, it was like, dang, Dion, like, got hit. And that's, like, our big dog. And, um, like, I know – Everybody is on board now with getting vaccinated because they don't want to go through it like how I did. And um, I was shocked like that I can impact the people that is around me like so closely, like where they're like, all right, I'm about to get vaccinated. But it has, yes, like it has, like from trickle effect all the way through and my family, from my nephews to my mom, to my dad, to my, to my brothers and sisters, everybody. Like everybody has just been on board with whatever we have to do to just try to protect ourselves as much as possible, but let's do it. So are you like three weeks out of getting out of the hospital or more than three weeks? Nah, I'm, I have no idea. Okay. I have like no idea. Big it's been... Yeah. That's the truth, but... You know, I don't think that I could ever say that everybody should just go ahead and do it because everybody's life is different. You know, like there's some people that believe in God or some people that don't. So to put everybody in one basket, like I can't find myself doing that. So I think that the proper way to answer that is uh, I really just want people to get the research of the good and the bad and the, and the examples and then go on your decision but just take it with a grain of salt and, and not like the over emotion that goes with it. Just do your research and just figure out what goes best for, for you and your family and your situation. Of course, of course. I mean, like, you know, I mean, any like positive test can affect anybody because with all these tracers and, and all this like technology, like if I get it, if I'm playing next to John or Ike or Mitch, they could be out for a couple of days and it could just trickle. So like I would say like, of course, like it could affect anything. Like for example, if you had COVID and you went home to your family, it could affect your family. So yeah. Did you have any conversations with Colby where he's been pretty, pretty vocal about being against the vaccine? Yeah. Um, so just to correct you, I don't think to defend bees, um, well, that's my brother and, uh, we're all here together and I don't think that he's downplaying it. I, I just think he's downplaying the, the knowledge that was given to him, you know, like, uh, everybody learns differently. Like I know as being an athlete, we were spoiled with here, drink this. Here, take this uniform. Here, take this sweatsuit. Here, this is what you should be doing to lose weight. This is what you should, should be doing to gain weight. Um, but I just think just the knowledge that, that was given um, in the world, not from the facility to him, not from, from the world. Like for bees, it just wasn't enough for him to make a, a decision. And as a person, like, he just feels like he could just speak in his mind, which he can. But I don't think that he was downplaying it. I just think that 
you know, for a guy at NIB, is like he just wants more, more and more knowledge to make the right and decision. Yeah, I was downtown at a general. There you go. It was right before, so the second shot, yep. and uh, it was just that two-week window. Okay, before you considered fully. There you go. The there you go, Sal. Thank you. Thank yep. You. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Yeah, Take care. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, bro. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs>